Hi friends, welcome back to our mission Motivate Million Minds series. This video will discuss about how to do the second internship after the second year in degree. Now, this is a, just an orientation example, basically to give an idea of what is the gist of this second internship that the students will be doing. Now let's get into this. As per the revised choice-based aid system based curriculum, which is implemented from the academic year 2021 by all the colleges in, this, in the country, three internships are mandatory for all students irrespective of the type of college, whether they are government, private aided, autonomous, constituent, or private unaided, and irrespective of the program of study, whether it is BA, BCom, BSc, BBA, Honours, etc., etc. Now, this is basically to give you the assessment methodology for internships, whether it is on-the-job training or apprenticeship, as a part for the, all the batches which are admitted from 2021 onwards. Now, let's understand the first internship we have already seen, which is expected to inculcate the social responsibility and compassionate commitment among the students, the summer vacation in the intervening first and second years of study, that is after the second semester after the first year, shall be the community service project. Then you have after the second year of examinations, uh, that is fourth semester examinations, most likely it could be April, May, the second internship is expected where it can be apprenticeship or on the job training or in house project or off site project, basically to make the students employable. Now, here there is a difference between community service project and internship, uh, apprenticeship. So, first internship is basically to inculcate the social responsibility and compassionate commitment among the students while they are serving in their own villages during the vacation. The second internship is basically an internship to understand any industry, whether it is a small scale industry or a large scale industry, in terms of either doing an apprenticeship or on the job training or in-house project or off-site project. Off-site project means you need not be at the site of the project, but still you can study the project, whether it is online or uh, you know with the help of some data or with the help of some analysis. Okay, so the second internship is basically helps the students to make them employable uh, and this shall be taken during the intervening summer between second and third year that is after the examinations of the fourth semester when the students are there on vacation uh, they are expected to do this uh, second internship then you have the third internship this is during the fifth or sixth semester period there is a difference between first two and the third one First two internships they will be doing during their summer vacation after the first year examinations and after the second year examinations. Whereas the third internship they are expected to do while studying the fifth or sixth semester period during the entire semester. So for the first internship, it could be duration could be for two months uh, when they are in vacation. The second internship could be for another two months when they are in vacation after second year. But the third internship is for six months while they are pursuing their third year course of study. That is the, that's important uh, note that is to be taken. And that's the basic difference what, uh, uh, among all the three internships. So this third internship uh, is slightly different in that the student is expected to do on the job training or apprenticeship. The student is expected to visit the industry stay there for some time or visit frequently to collect some data, understand their problem, analyze, analyze the problem, then submit a project report to that industry and to the institution. This is basically to ensure that the students develop hands-on technical skills, which will be of great help in facing the world of work. So these are all about the internships uh, of, for the, all the students who are admitted from any graduation from 2021 onwards which is mandatory. The next first internship we have already seen in my earlier video, uh, community uh, service projects. Those who have not covered it, you can just go through. 
It is explained with a sample example of uh, integrated rural energy planning exercise that could be done uh, as a template. Uh, and this video basically concentrates on second internship, uh, which the students have to do in the form of apprenticeship or on the job training or in-house project or off-site uh, project which I have explained with the help of an example. Then uh, let's concentrate mainly on the second internship learning outcomes. Uh, because again, it is said it could be apprenticeship or on the job training or in-house project or off-site project. In-house project means you are visiting the industry and doing within the industry. Off-site means you are not visiting the industry, but still you are collecting the data and doing that. As we have seen, the second, the learning outcomes of the second internship is basically to explore career alternatives prior to graduation, integrate theory and practice, assess interests and abilities in their field of study, then learn to appreciate work and its function towards future, develop work habits and attitudes necessary for job success, develop communication, interpersonal and other critical skills in the future job, build a record of work experience, and then acquire employment contacts leading directly to your full-time job following graduation from college. And finally, acquire additional skills required for field of work, wherever uh, you will be doing. So this is exactly what are the learning outcomes of the second internship. Then if we see the assessment model of this second internship, it is only through internal evaluation by the college, uh, within the college, then each faculty mentor, each mentor, uh, each faculty will be a mentor and he or she are expected to guide 10 to 15 students as a batch. Then the assessment is for 100 marks, which will be carrying four credits. Then the project lag will carry 20% of the marks, that is 20 marks, project lag in the sense while doing the internship, whatever the record that you are making, please maintain a logbook, have a uh, every day that you visit the industry, have a date and do all the tasks that you are uh, doing. What is the data that you are recording on which day, with whom you have spoken, what data they have given. And you, you have to log all this data. This project log is assessed by the assessing team and will be allotted for 20 marks. Then project implementation how you are doing the project, how you are implementing the project, how you are going through the project, and what are, what is, what, how do you have identified the problem statement of the industry, how you have analyzed the uh, uh, data of the industry, and what are the recommendations and conclusions that you have given about the industry. This is on the implementation, project implementation, which will carry for 30 marks. Then the project report, when you finally make a project report, how you have written the report, what is the format that you have written, how you have um, you know, compiled the data and how you have reported, presented the uh, data in the form of a, a report and uh, the format and your uh, you know, written skills and, uh, and analytical skills, everything will be evaluated for 25 marks. And finally, presentation, you are expected to give a presentation to the group of faculty in the college of whatever you have done about all these things and your presentation skills. So let's see the assessment of each stage, what will be done. If you see the project log, your day-to-day -day activities are to be recorded in your project log with a date. Then the individual students' effort and commitment will be assessed because that will be clearly reflected in your project log. And then the originality and quality of the work produced. Because when you do an internship, your project log, when you have a date in your notebook, and on that date, you are expected to, uh, you know, put your uh, observations with whom you have taken, what is the data, what is the industry data, and who, with how many people you have to, all these things. So the originality and quality of the work produced will be assessed through your project log. And then students' integration and cooperation with the work assigned, that will also be reflected in your uh, project log, because you will be recording every time that I have uh, interacted with so many people, then they referred this. And then to contact the, uh, what is the resources? What is the reference manual with whom to contact? State nodal agencies, uh, national nodal agencies. All these things should reflect in your project log. Then it will be easy for the assessment. Then the assessment team also knows, yes, the student has 
definitely recorded uh, every day uh, how you have integrated your resources and how you have extracted the cooperation uh, with all the concerned. That is exactly what reflects and assists on the project log. Then the completeness of the logbook. It's not that you have one or two pages in the logbook. Your logbook should have a series and sequence of activities that has resulted in your implementation of the project. So every day you have visited the industry, every day you are in the industry, there should be a diary of activities, what you have done. And finally, when you come to the end of the thing, first day to last day of your visit and your observations and your recommendations, that reflects the completeness of the logbook. So you have to take care the, while writing the project log. All these points should be kept in mind while maintaining a project log. Then the second assessment component is on project implementation. So this is based on the entries of the project log and the project report. So the evaluators will see both your project log and the project report, then assess the involvement in the work assigned. You know, what is your involvement in the assigned work? And then regularity in the work assigned. Okay, how frequently you have visited, how frequently you have contacted the people, how frequently you have collected the data, whether you have, you, are, you have collected the required data, relevant data to that particular organization, whether uh, your data collected is meaningful for the overall implementation of the uh, project and all these things. Then you also have to record in terms of some you know, brackets or in terms of graphical representation, what is the new knowledge acquired in the project implementation, whether you have understood about the uh, industry or the organization and what uh, additional knowledge you are expected to learn, you can also record it in the project log or your project report will clearly know that what is the new knowledge acquired by you. And finally, the new skill acquired. You can always say that you, know, you have understood an organization, you have understood the organization structure, you have understood the process of the industry, you have understood the marketing strategy of the industry, you have understood the you know, overall uh, strategy, uh, how uh, marketing has to be uh, improved, how HR strategy of the industry, what is the customer strategy of the industry. And this is all uh, will help you in acquiring the new skill. Or if you are going to be deep science thing, you can understand the process involved. And then, so all these entries are, all these points are to be kept in mind while assessing the project implementation stage. Then we have the assessment components, project presentation, project report anyway, we will see, although that is the third assessment component. We will see, uh, first we will see the project presentation, then we'll concentrate on the project report, how exactly it go. So the project presentation is assessing the involvement in the project when you are presenting, apart from your presentation skills, the team is expected to assess how, to what extent you have involved in the presentation. And then the, your presentation skills, and then final outcome of the project, whether the project or the industry internship that you have say, taken, what is the outcome of it, whether it, it has any relevance um, for the overall objective of the in, your internship or your overall uh, you know, holistic improvement of yourself or the student. That is exactly uh, what is assessed, what has to be assessed. Uh, in this. So the students are, are required to keep in mind all these three points uh, while presenting the report. Then let's understand the project report because this concern, this is uh, basically to give you an idea uh, of a general project report format includes you have a product, you have to write an introduction, then project specifications, what is the area, what is the background of the area work assigned, then problems taken up in that in organization, then analysis of that problem, and finally recommendations and conclusions. So, so all the five components are very, very important when you are writing the project report format. Now let's see a particular uh, template uh, example. Uh, uh, the example assessment form will be like this. The so name of the student will be given like this and class and year of study, the registered number of the student for assessing component for project lag, maximum marks are 20, then the mark secured by the student is 15. Then project implementation unit is for 30, the mark secured could be 20, project report is 25 marks secured, could be 20, presentation is 25 marks. And so the total out of 100 marks, 75 marks are secured by this particular 
students. So these 75 marks are converted to letter grade into B plus plus. Again, B plus. Again, you know, you have a, a standard uh, jargon from S, A, B, B plus 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 on. So for different marks, you get, you will have a letter grade as per the standard uh, format of the college. So this will be a, an example assessment pro forma, uh, how it appears for the student. Then, you know, the definition of an internship. So we are concentrating in this only after the second year. Internship is a period in which you work for free or for little pay in order to learn a skill or get your foot in the door of an industry. Basically, this will uh, this will make you, this will give you a, a bird's eye view of an industry, how an industry looks like. It could be a small, you know, there are different types of uh, industries. It could be a, a micro, small and medium scale industries, large scale industries. Um, you know, an example could be when you work for an organization for free over your summer vacation in order to learn what the business is like. So you will be basically understanding uh, how the business is run, how an organization is run. So the examples, if you see, the businesses could be, you know, it could, it could be a small bakery. You know, it's again a small scale industry. It could be a rice mill in your village, a bakery in your uh, village or in your small town at a hotel or a lodge and uh, a multi-speciality hospital, a restaurant, a printing press, a superstore, a medical agency. Now, like this, there could be a number of uh, things. Ultimately, whether it is a small, medium, and a small, micro, small, and medium scale industry, all that you need to do, all that the student uh, need to do is the understand that particular organization from the point of view of the process, where from they are getting the uh, raw material, how it is being processed, how it is being uh, uh, packed, and how it is being marketed, and how the human resources are being managed, how many labor are there, how many are, how the work is organized, how the industry is managed, how they are managing the uh, account books, you know, and how they are filing the taxes, and uh, where they are getting the consultancy, and how they are improving the market, what is the origin of the industry, and what is its social commitment, all these things you can uh, analyze, basically, from every point of view. So the list can be endless, and every village, every small town will have some uh, small organization or the uh, thing. So what is expected out of the student internship here, if you see here, where you will learn a skill or get your foot in the door of an industry. Basically, you will have a bird's eye view of how a small business is like. No, no, not many students will have opportunity to visit the large industries, not, it need not be. And every small town will have a small crockery shop, small uh, bakery shop, uh, small, small organization. So go and talk to them periodically, understand their uh, business, talk to them politely, because you tell them on what, where, how, why you have come, because internship is made mandatory for you, and you are there in that organization basically to understand their business. So seek their help, get maximum information, and then try to understand. So each one in this. So for the benefit of the students to write the uh, report, I have taken bakery as an example. Uh, thing. So now I also have, I will give you a brief for existing industrial clusters in Andhra Pradesh. You know, uh, Andhra Pradesh has a very rich industrial uh, set of clusters. For cashew processing, we have Palasa of Srikakulam and Vetapalam of Prakasham. For mango jelly around Kakinada of East Godavari, what, there are 125 units in Sarpavaram in East Godavari district alone. For fruit canning, Chittur and Krishna district, biscuits and confectionery, Tenali in Guntur district, marine foods, you have Vishakapatnam and Kakinada, and brass metal works, you have Buditi in Srikakulam, Srikala Hasti Chittur, and Agraharam in West Godavari, aluminum utensils, you have Rajmandri in East Godavari, steel furniture, you have all over, and majority is in Vajavada, automobile industry, Vijayawada, Kakinada for auto parts and uh, bodybuilding. Then agricultural implements, you have Gudiwada, Krishna district, and Ramchandra Param in East Kodavari district. And then wooden toys, you have Pandapalli in Krishna district, Srikala Asti, Varipenta of Kadapa district. Like this, you know, existing, there are so many industrial clusters all over the state. Like this, all over the country also, you will have different things. So identify which is near to you and where you can have access. And in the possible, take a letter from your college, take a letter from your head of the department, go and talk to that industry and every industry will accommodate you. That's the one thing. Then 
the second hint which i want to give you i want to give a brief idea of what is the spectrum of micro and small scale cottage industries in andhra pradesh you know all these come under cottage small and cottage industries uh, in food processing beverage and tobacco products cotton textile wool silk synthetic fiber textiles jute hemp and mesta you know uh, textiles um, hemp and mesta you know we normally call it as a gongura and then hosiery and garments wood products wooden products paper products and printing leather and leather products rubber plastic and petroleum products chemical and allied products mineral based industries metal products you can have machinery and equipment electrical and electronic uh, industry transport equipment and parts repairs and services so if you see in any small town you will have one or two of any of these kind of um, industries um, you know basically a small small business organizations they can industry and they don't think that uh, you will have a big factory all these things even a small um, house where you have magam ne sa wala that itself is a very good uh, industry go and try to understand how they are making it and uh, uh, how many labor they are in front how much they are getting how many hours they are uh, working and at the end of the day how they are marketing and then you understand their problem and then help how you can improve their marketing skills how you can improve their working environment how you can improve their uh, you know total business strategy and all these things are most of the time it is just a common sense approach where every student can give the inputs to the industry and then miscellaneous all these people okay so let's say if you if we try to come and form the report uh, format uh, number one it should have a title page then you should say project report on so and so industry organization submitted to department of so and so and government college so and so in partial fulfillment of the second internship after fourth semester for the award of the degree of ba bcom such and by the name of the student under the mentorship of your lecturer name whoever is guiding lecturer in which subject all these things and you can always write uh, your uh, month intervening summer uh, month whatever you are submitting for so this is a just a template of the uh, title page then you should your report should have a table of contents with serial number topic and uh, page number then first thing is acknowledgement we'll see how to write the acknowledgement then you should write the introduction and then give the page number then the second chapter you should have a project specifications area and background of the work again a page number problems identified what are the problems identified and then analysis of the problems in this and then recommendations and conclusions you can give a page number then references whatever the references it could be name of the individuals or it could be manuals or resources or web links this kind of thing and finally give an extra in the page so this uh, is a template for the table of contents for the project then you can have a certificate saying that certified that the project report title so and so is a bona fide work done by the name of the student class and register number submitted to the department of the college government college in which place in partial fulfillment of the second internship after fourth semester for the award of the degree of so and so so you can have a date signature of the mentor faculty signature of the head of the department signature of the principal then you can write the acknowledgement part you know you take the opportunity to thank so and so your principal of the college your faculty your head of the department and all those people who have helped the thing then you can also say a special thanks for continuous support for the industry in which you industry Uh, you have worked in which industry person has helped you yeah, i would also like to acknowledge the help of one two three so many people from the organization for providing all sorts of help in carrying out the uh, project then say you acknowledge the cooperation of so many people other than the industry uh, whose help you have written uh, taken and whose assistance has been helpful in so like this you can write some more sentences all basically you are acknowledging the help support and guidance uh, that you have uh, taken in completing this project and finally you thank the authorities of your college uh, you know for enabling you to do this particular type of approach so in the process what is expected to give a, you give a description of your overall internship ex experience in the introduction while introducing the thing while describing the uh, industry you give a you know overall internship experience in the introduction and in the body you describe what your goals were and how you met them then discuss how your internship contributed to the organization and conclude with how your internship will contribute to your growth in the conclusion part of it. these are all the 
then in introduction you can always say you know a brief review of the company's history including who founded it when was it founded what was that purpose how many employees were there and what was the business all that thing you can uh, write so established in so and so uh, this particular company is in the business of doing bakery or rice mill so they are well known in the field of their uh, business the mission is you can always identify what mention business goals and their social work commitments here and then you can say a company plays a role in promoting the their social activities uh, for the welfare of the local community and the nation at large so like this you can write any number of sentences this is just a introduction then company's mission statement and its regular business activities if it is a large thing how many towns it has how many branches it has uh, how many workforce it has and about the company and your role in the overall scheme you can also write so as an intern with this particular company you worked in a particular uh, role you know as an intern understanding this uh, you know particular place and position was responsible for uh, you know undertaking tasks um, i am responsible for uh, uh, understanding the, the human resources number of people they are working the process involved then the business strategy or commerce people you can concentrate only on the marketing part of it science students you can concentrate only on the science uh, the process part of it and then say that uh, all these thing and i was part of this uh, department processing department production department marketing department hr uh, uh, department and overall business uh, department so you can say that the your introductory uh, chapter could have all these points and you can write all those things as we have already seen brief description of the overall internship experience in the introduction that what uh, we will be given so that's about the um, introduction then the second uh, uh, is on the project specification because when you want to give a project specification you have to give basically the nature and scope of work so here i have taken the example of a bakery and uh, similar typical business objectives what you, uh, you will be given if you take a now the, 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 don't ever take only only uh, bakery bakery i have taken because it's a it's available in every small town and number of bakeries are there in any uh, uh, small town and uh, you you can always take all the small scale industries which i have discussed earlier you know but uh, because i need an example to uh, do the project specifications understand the problems and analyze the problems and then give recommendations and conclusions i have taken the bakery example so you can write say uh, the, this is the main body of the project Uh, report you know we can say business objective of the bakery you know it can be established in a retail business from storefront location selling baked goods to consumers or a bakery can be established as a wholesale business selling baked goods to food retailers and institutions building a broad and committed customer base and developing a business model that brings in enough income to cover expenses despite a potentially high level of waste and you can always say bakery products like bread biscuits and cakes are always in demand hence a person who starts in business will never be at loss moreover a product will be more if you provide more products in your bakery so these are all the business uh, project specifications you can always say so types of uh, bakeries retail bakery wholesale bakery and home bakeries and what are the duties of baker also you can explain check the quality of a baking ingredients prepare equipment for baking measure and weigh flour and other ingredients combine measure ingredients in mixes and blenders knead reel cut and shape dough place dough into pans into molds or into baking sheets and you can always explain uh, you know uh, so you will have different people working in different departments uh, that is the uh, of the things where you can write the project specifications you know so many departments are there this again depends if it is a retail a wholesale or home bakery you will have everything in we will be doing three or four people If you are wholesale, you will be doing number of each one is a department that sort of a thing, so that you understand a particular organization and industry and their departments. Then you can always uh, identify the problems uh, in the thing. So what are the problems identified? You know, say for uh, example, in a bakery, specific problems. What are the thing? You can say there is a stiff competition from competitors offering similar products. People moving towards health and food products because that's also a problem. and change in price of raw materials again a uh, competition because of the competition you have to be that's one typical uh, problem on baker space unique challenges with the shelf life of their ingredients 
their products are more difficult to distribute globally because of the freshness factor and shelf life issues yet according to many industry forecasts bread and baked goods are trending towards explosive growth in the next decade staffing weaknesses of a bakery operations and cleanliness is a challenge financial management process is a challenge bakery marketing is also a so all these problems you are identifying again uh, let, let me remind you that this is only for the bakery and for this you can do it for any small industry whether it is a medical thing or a hotel industry or a restaurant everything applicable similar lines you can always identify the problems then analyze the problems now this is analyze the problem this is a generic sign don't think it only for thing uh, I, i wanted to give a brief idea about the analysis of the problem so while analyzing the problem you have to convert complex data into understandable for formats whether they are into format you know pie charts or bar charts and then finding understandable tables graphs and reports so if you categorize the data into tables graphs and reports so uh, it will be easy for the analysis of the problem and then finalize the reports and prepare them for presentation to the senior management and the client to the same industry people in you know, to their manager to the owner you can say that this is the data i have collected and you can you can present the uh, reports and meeting and liaising with the clients you can also talk to the customers of the bakery products or any industry products because you are expected to solve the problems and find out the remedies or recommendations for the problems for that you require the analysis of the problem you many times you may have to talk to the customer in terms of restaurants in terms of uh, uh, you know hotels or uh lodges you need to talk to the clients in order to understand in order to get some recommendations then writing distributing and managing questionnaires if it is required for a market uh, research then undertaking demographic research then making presentations to senior company staff and clients so the analysis of the problem you may have to do any one or all of these things again these analysis have given a general uh, clues uh, you can always take the help of one or few in order to suit your own small scale industry that you have chosen then while analyzing the problem again while uh, you can also say process description science students concentrate more on the process uh, description when you are receiving the raw materials and you have an inventory stockyard and from this inventory you are going to kneading section and then baking section and then uh, you, uh, parallelly your marketing team sales team are receiving the orders production you are planning the production how much uh, product each product how much i have to do in a day in a month and then you are sending for packaging and delivery to customers all this so this could be a, a typical process flow uh, of the uh, industry then again you can also say have a, a pie chart this is an example of a pie chart just to explain how a butter cake is made in a in a bakery you know uh, butter is what is the composition of the butter in that what is the composition of sugar in that what is the composition of flour in that what is the composition of egg in that in that uh, butter cake so like this this is only an example i have taken this may be applicable to every other industry every other small uh, scale organization divide them divide them and demonstrate that this is a better understanding of analyzing the problem okay better representation better reporting to the management saying that if you divide the ingredients within a butter cake and tell them even the management will be oh there's so much of percentage uh, is there this is the this is what uh, i meant by analysis of the problem then um, you can also say as a part of the analysis you can also say bakers are the heart of a community they help uh, memorialize important moments and events in everyone's lives supporting your local baker means supporting your community you can also uh, write you know your report also needs some sentences you know in, in your analysis you can write your observations like this and then you can also collect some all this information is there in the google and for every small scale industry every internship industry small organization internship that you are doing you can have so much of information in from your google then say it's a top 6 industrial bakery trends what are expected in 2021 is reduced sugar trend longer shelf life and frozen bakery products the plant based diet is more favorable and flavors that boost the immune system is also more favorable and hybrid baked uh, products so you can also your analysis also suggest this sort of thing and then you can also suggest that take a look at five effective strategies you can adopt to grow sales at your uh, bakery and this also results in your analysis part include nutrition information in the menu 
keep your best products available in different servings start offering samples of new products to your new customers cater special events to advertise for your businesses and then display your products online have a good uh, website and all this kind of so you can consider all these points in order to consider it for the recommendations you are analyzing all these points at this stage you can always say i have explored all these things in the analysis stage then finally your recommendations and conclusion chapter will have the you can always say a few lines this is only an example which i have taken the success of any bakery whether a home based or commercial operation hinges largely on the quality of the products so the in the bakery is expected or the industry is expected to develop a repatriate of baked goods that stand apart from those sold at other local sources or made by individuals so like this you can say two three paragraphs and uh, why your recommendations uh, will be important then you can list out each suggested uh, recommendation then uh, say these are only the examples of uh, bakery have a clear finance sheet because the industry if, it, if they, they do not have the finance sheet in the sense and uh, that you know how much order they are getting how much raw material cost they are getting and finally how much is marketing what is the profit margin what extent is the raw material cost what is the individual salary cost what is the marketing cost what is the packaging cost this sort of thing so you can say that if they do not have have a clear finance sheet and then diversity attracts you have you should have diversity of your goods products having a website is a must you can always suggest for a website create a social media uh, for the following for the you can always suggest integrate with the online delivery platforms also you can suggest use technology to manage your bakery operations you can network with all the local businesses also you can suggest and you can also suggest them find your niche because there are plenty of bakeries out there offering delicious baked goods of all sorts so you should have your own niche in that then create strategic partnership with distributors you can identify who are all the distributors and who are all the particular industry can partner with and consideration is given to proper sanitation and cleaning conditions hygiene of worker sanitization of industry environment inspection of workers so all these point you now some of these points also could be common to many of other industries so again this uh, we have taken an example of a bakery this could be a rice mill this could be a, um, a any uh, a restaurant or a hotel or a medical agency that sort of thing then you can always say conclusions now you can write a few sentences going hand in hand with taste texture and appearance are just as important people are often times willing to spend more money on a product depending on the appearance of the treats additionally a majority of customers like to experiment with the texture of the items they buy so build relationships stay in touch with your customers to keep your store on their radar and offer unique options uh, one of the best way to retain customers is offer products that they can't get anywhere else then implement a loyalty program and all uh, these things finally you can say to conclude the usefulness of this internship from career point of view for this sort of thing so we have, you can conclude uh, saying that you know we have done all these things and it it has been a very great exp learning experience uh, for me i have learned all these things for so art students science students commerce students you can conclude with your own orientation to what extent related to commerce that you have learned from your industry um, related to general business for art students what you have understood for science students related to you know the the process involved the scientific process involved the science involved behind the um, in the uh, in each process in each industry when you say again then if you come back uh, to this our uh, uh, original thing here right they can be leather products biscuits and uh, confectionery see it could be a bakery rice mill water or lodge multi speciality hospital restaurant printing press super store medical agency or so they have just taken an example of a bakery you can always say the all other industries it could be rubber products it could be tire retreating uh, company uh, all, all sorts of uh,